After talking about optimizing the extruder tube in the previous video, I'm now turning on the topic of extruder screws, because simply using something screw-like rarely works well. The obviously simplest component of my extruder concept still has to meet very precise requirements so that the plastic can be pressed out of the nozzle with as little force as possible and, above all, uniformly. For the extruder tube I used so far with an inner diameter of 6mm, a wood screw with a diameter of 4.5mm proved to be a good choice. Further experiments will show whether this is the optimum. The pitch of the screw is 2.6mm and this is an important parameter for a working extruder. The pitch rules how much material is pressed downwards per revolution. The smaller the pitch, the less material is moved per revolution, but the force exerted in the direction of the nozzle is greater for the same torque. The pitch together with the gears rules the overall ratio of the system and so the number of steps the extruder motor has to make to extrude a given volume of plastic. The pitch of the helix must be as small as possible but must be large enough so that the largest grains of the raw material fit in between. The diameter of the screw core is about 2.8mm. This means that with an ideally centered screw, 0.75mm remain between the edges of the thread and the inner wall of the extruder tube. There is a gap of 1.6mm between core and wall. Purely theoretically, only plastic grains with a diameter of up to 1.6mm should fit into the extruder. Anyone who saw my first video on getting granules from failed grins will know that the mesh size of my sieve made of a peanut can was 2mm and I used this raw material successfully. The reasons why all grains of this raw material can be extruded is that most of the grains have a diameter significantly smaller than 2mm... ...and that the extruder is not manufactured with zero tolerances. The screw is not nailed exactly in the center of the tube and the coupling from the stepper motor allows the M8 screw head to move freely within limits. The remaining gap between the screw and the extruder wall is not due to a lack of manufacturing technology, but rather fulfills an important function. The air can escape through this gap while the plastic grains fuse into a compact mass on their way to the nozzle. As already shown several times, the 4.5mm screw works very well. What about a smaller diameter of just 4mm? The pitch is 2mm and the core diameter is also 2mm. With these parameters, even larger grains could eventually be processed. However, the printing result is significantly worse. The extrusion is obviously less consistent because the grains cannot be grabbed as well due to the smaller helix. This could possibly be improved with a different geometry at the extruder inlet, but why make it complicated when you can simply do it with a larger screw? A different grain size distribution with portions of larger particles could possibly help the 4mm screw to be successful. More on this in one of the upcoming videos. What bothered me is the rough surface of the screws used so far, which causes unnecessary friction. So I ordered a shiny chrome plated brass screw with a smaller but still sufficiently large pitch of 2mm and installed it in the extruder. Here too, the result is worse. The thermal conductivity of brass and chrome is significantly higher than that of steel, which causes the zone of softened plastic to grow in the extruder tube, resulting in higher friction. The next candidate is a 4.5mm diameter screw made of stainless steel. 
In addition to a lower thermal conductivity, this also has a smoother surface than the screw made of galvanized steel, also it is rougher than that of the chrome plated screw. At 2mm, the pitch is the same as with the chrome plated version. The core diameter at 2.8mm is the same as with the screw made of normal steel. The print quality achieved with this is similar to that with the galvanized steel screw. The lower pitch and thermal conductivity as well as the slightly smoother surface have no significant influence on the consistency of the extrusion. The last candidate is a 5mm diameter screw made of stainless steel. The pitch of the 5mm screw is 2.2mm and the core diameter is around 3mm, both values are slightly larger than that of the 4.5mm screw. Two forces act on the auger screw. On the one hand, the torque exerted by the stepper motor via the gears. And on the other hand, there is a force along the screw axis via the threads, which pushes the granules downwards and in turn pushes the screw upwards. The second force is absorbed by a ball bearing on the plate at the top of the extruder. Even if the bending of that plate during extrusion is hardly noticeable, During the retraction and thus when the mechanics are bent back, the screw dives into the extruder, resulting in more prominent knobs with the 5mm screw. Bending the mechanics is undesirable when operating as a printer, but in the experimental phase it is a clear indicator of whether one screw or extruder geometry is better or worse than another. So let's quickly stiffen the mechanics at the crucial point with a piece of 6mm aluminum plate. This significantly reduces bending, which also significantly improves retraction behavior. Now you can get pretty good prints with the 5mm screw. As a reminder, the track link is only 25 by 27 by 12 mm small. As always, printing is done with a 0.4 mm nozzle and a layer height of 0.2 mm. In general, the granules are pressed into the extruder quite uniformly, both via the slots in the previous versions and via the step 4 currently used. The aluminum plate mounted on the quick, which is actually far too heavy, makes the extruder even more top heavy, which means that the effects such as ringing caused by the weak printer mechanics become more noticeable. The large hopper also proves to be problematic. In this, the granules are shaken during printing and thus get separated as the larger grains float to the top. What is more problematic, however, is that the grains become compacted during this process and no longer trickle down as easily. This means that the material flow will rise as the printing time increases when the hopper is well filled. As a solution, the granules must always be mixed well, which can be done with a simple wire on the screw coupling or on the screw itself. Based on the knowledge gained, version 5 of this extruder, which is currently in development, will be a big step towards a real desktop granule printer. The mechanics will become more sturdy and the printhead finally will get the much requested part cooling fan. As part of the next development step, the aging printer mechanics will be replaced by a Prusa MK4. The box delivered from Prague can already be seen here. More on why this and no other printer will be explained in the next video.
Extruder version 4 served me well during experimenting and the results are already impressive, even if the colorful mix of recycled granules makes the surface appear more uneven than it actually is the case. For further tests I will prepare monochrome raw material, because there are still many experiments to be carried out. Therefore many thanks to my anonymous major sponsor and to all the great people who have already supported or continue to support this project using the donate button on my pages. On my website you will also find further information about the project, have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.